Now, let's get back to Real Estate and More with your host, Michael Hatfield. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking with our special guest, uh, Pat Vitucci, on retirement here, there, and everywhere. You know, I was enjoying it so much, let's get right back to it. You know, I had a guest the other day that was talking about how he and his wife had bought their first home and then they ran into a recession. In other words, the market, the the ocean that all the home values swim in had kind of come back. When I met you, I had just retired from the airline and my son and my wife and I had built a spec home. And that's when I had met you. And then we run smack dab into the 2008 through 2010 recession. And it was it was difficult because the home values had had went down a lot. So this kind of adds to the point when the market is up, that is the time that you should sell your home, not really rest on your loyals and go out and enjoy the remainder of the years that uh, the good Lord has given us. Yeah, I've seen too many clients I've had from for 30 years. Um, I call them echo depression babies. You know, most of us uh, grew up with parents who went through the depression and the frugality that we saw that they had to live by. We kind of kind of we absorbed it because we didn't have a choice. They they were stained by the depression and probably a good thing they lived very frugal conservative lifestyles and now I'm of the age where I'm a, uh, an echo uh, depression baby and I had that element of being frugal um, but then you've got to say to sit back and say wait a minute I bought, I'm, I'm of this age I've got maybe this many years left I'm not taking it with me we're going to leave my children with lots of money that's not my ultimate goal. My goal is to enjoy what I've what I have, and like it or not, they're going to end up with a lot of money. But that's that's so you got to. I've had clients who are multi multi millionaires and will not spend uh, a nickel to go out to take their wife out to a to a nice restaurant for, for for dinner. So it's 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 that moderation of 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 life. You know, you can't you can't save it all. You can't spend it all. You've got to have somewhere in the middle are you a spender or are you a saver uh at this point in our life you need to really uh relax and, and enjoy what you worked for well going back to the roots um you didn't come from uh a big financial uh well well-being family you were <laughs> no, I didn't. you were uh you know of the modest uh um i was a poor italian kid yeah yeah and on a different coast too uh, and, on the east coast yeah. yeah absolutely and and i had everything that i needed uh i had um you know a a dad that was an automobile mechanic and a mom that was in real estate and it wasn't a real it was a real modest home so you know you get this motivation and this drive and then you you work your tail off until you get a little bit of money put aside and you start thinking about retirement and some folks you know they don't look at all of the aspects for retirement they don't look at the cost of living where they're going to go they just have to have a place to put their their belongings if they sell their home here you know maybe an alternate way of thinking about that should be sell when the market produces the most amount of proceeds making sure that you have enough funds because that that's certainly a good way to go and then select what you want according to cost of living location um, sense of community to me sense of community is everything and even though you don't speak the language and you're in the country of Greece you can find a few words and you can start talking and the next thing you know you have enough to communicate and that to me as a former international airline captain was the thing to do and i enjoyed that so much people just light up and have that community about you and you do the same thing you know you walk into the room and you say hey i'm pat and everybody says yeah who's this guy with a pink shirt on you know he's <laughs> and they uh they they like that and so you know all of these factors go into your retirement and and your thoughts that you do um i i just um i just can't say enough about you know the folks that are sitting here in these homes that they've been in for 30 40 years um you know go out and live life a little bit do the alternate approach maybe you don't have a place to put all of your belongings at the moment but if the market is good and hot the way it is right now sell your home at a great value get the proceeds and then let that money work for you yeah, cash flow is is uh, is is the very big issue, uh, and so what I've done in my career for thirty years is sit down with 
a single person or a couple. And on one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, I can pretty well define assets, liabilities, and what's a reasonable cash flow to drive from those numbers. It's easy to quantify with numbers, but we've talked about the emotion of, of retirement and the geography of retirement and healthcare and all those other issues. So um, it's easy to put the pencil to the paper and come up with, all right, here's your cash flow, 10 grand a month, whatever the number is. It's, it, 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 that arithmetic is not difficult. Then what do you do with the 10 grand a month and what can that buy you in Bay Area versus any other part of the world? And so that's kind of the, kind of the equation that kind of drives uh, and it, it kind of funnels down to what are some of the areas I can afford versus what are the, some of the areas I really enjoy, uh, would enjoy potential living in. You know, when I first started flying, there's a little checklist that goes on in my mind all the time amongst those other things that go on in my mind all of the time. It's number one, see your target clearly which in this case would be a uh, good suitable retirement elsewhere with all of the items that you just talked about, the sense of community, the, the cost of living, and um, all of those important factors, healthcare, which we, we know is really important. So number one is see your target clearly. Number two is plan a checklist. Put those items down and say, I'm looking at this place over here. And does it, where does it weigh each one of them, uh, these points? Where does this stack up uh, as opposed to uh, this other location? Number three is start executing on this. And number four, just evaluate as you go. Well, it works great for flying. In this case, for retirement, it would work just fabulous because you can say, all right, well, I want to move to, I want to move to Montana. So I'm going to talk about since a community, I go up and I visit. Everybody is really friendly up there. It's in the middle of summer. There's a few uh, bears looking around. Um, anyway, it's just, um, just um, unbelievable. Well, again, we're going on here with, with, uh, my good friend and an incredible guest, uh, Pat Vitucci, been in the business uh, of financial planning for a number of years, world-class uh, traveler. <laughs> he's done a lot of great things and he's coached so many people in the right direction with their retirement. So, you know, as we go on, one thing that comes to mind to me is, you know, set those points out. If you go to look for a certain location and to do it, you know, see your target, which would be retirement. Number two, plan your checklist. Number three, do each and every step on your checklist and number four evaluate as you go you know it just occurs to me like if you look at one of these places you, you can weigh how good each one of these are the pros and cons and it can really really make a difference yeah it's it's kind of a fun fun project michael uh it, it's kind of when you work for all those years you kind of dream about retirement and you don't want to make retirement into a stressful horror show i mean it and and you could you you could drive yourself a little wacky and then all of a sudden you your 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 stress level gives you some health issues so you want to do it in a very relaxed mode and it, there's there's no um there's no uh you, you know you don't have to get it done by next next weekend so it, it, it's it's a very methodical planning process that um between you as a realtor and and, and me as a financial advisor we we we've been working together with clients for many many years and and it's that that collective coaching i don't know a lot about real estate i know it's an important element in a financial plan but um um so your expertise with nancy coaching on the real estate side and 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 then i include those numbers as part of the equation that kind of dictates what your cash flow is going to look like it uh, really results in a, in a in a very strategic, well thought out plan that can hopefully bring some favorable uh, results. Yeah, you know, I saw this one couple um, that actually they didn't look at all of the aspects that we've talked about the cost of living including taxes this and that and they just looked at uh, the sense of community but more it was more a sense of family they followed uh, one of their children uh, north and then pretty soon it wasn't the best thing then they followed another one of their children elsewhere and it's kind of tough when you when you just say well this is the most important thing is family so i'm going to do essentially what it it takes to follow family they don't look at the other um ideas as where's the real estate market how i'm going to make money after we've 
been there for a while. You know, I, it's it's a, a weight of all of those good things. Yeah, I've seen I've seen clients follow their children, and if their children are successful, and they get transferred from, uh, they move with their kids to Michigan, and then the then the kid gets uh, promoted to Idaho, and they move to Idaho, and then the kid gets promoted again to Nevada. Uh, that's hardly a plan to follow. Um, yeah, you love your kids and you want to follow them, but um, you know, visit them several, two or three or four times a year. Uh, I'm not sure if following them and buying real estate every time is a prudent thing to do. I've seen some of them do it. It's, a, it's just an incredible way. So where would you move if you were going to retire everywhere? Where would be your top potential spots? Well, I'm, I'm a beach guy. I love the beach. I get into a whole level of comfort and, and uh, relaxation on the beach. So Hawaii is kind of my, my favorite spot. You like to watch those turtles surf, don't those you? Those turtles are, are incredible. My wife is a mountain girl. She is a great skier. She grew up in, in uh, Reno. Uh, so she loves skiing. So we spent a fair amount of time uh, up in up in the uh, Sierras. And, and so we get to, uh, she gets to exercise her, her great skiing. I'm a, kind of an average to below average skier. I started late in life. She started when she was three or four years old. So it's that blend of mountain life and beach life that um, we kind of balance out. We kind of satisfy each other's needs. Um, I'm a warm weather guy. She loves the cold and I've grown to not to tolerate it a lot better. Somehow cold in the, in the Sierras is a whole lot better than cold on the East Coast where I grew up. You just can't get warm with that damp cold uh, back east. I said damp cold back east. Yeah, I thought I heard a bad word there, but I, <laughs> no, no it's, it's cleared up. But uh, yeah, Sierras are are, are 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 beautiful as well. Well, we were up there visiting uh, Pat and his bride one time, and, and we went for a walk, which uh, at our vintage, we have to do things like that. We have to stay in shape. We have to exercise. If you're in cold environment, it, you have to find alternate ways to do it. And and for me, I'm with you that it's, it's much easier to get that exercise you need to keep everything working that needs to be working. And I remember we were taking that walk, and uh, Pat kept looking around, looking around for the bears, like, because there were bears visiting it everywhere oh, yeah. and yeah. you got to look out for the bears no matter where you are yeah yep. no it's um uh, you know the mountains are beautiful so living up in the western part of the country is certainly you know we're blessed with mountains we're blessed with ocean and and how do you how do you beat that how do you beat that combo now i have a question a lot of wise men have said if you have your health you have everything if you don't have your health you don't have much so what are your thoughts on that pat well, I think you touched on it. Exercise is one of those things that um, I never really like to do. You and I work out a, a fair amount, and we commit to one hour at the gym, and we kind of buddy up and help each other out. And I watch the clock the entire hour um, because I hate exercising. I hate lifting weights. But at our age, if you don't, stay healthy and God knows what's in store for us tomorrow so we take every day as a as a blessing but healthcare is uh, now one of those more more of a preventative issues that it's always top of mind when you're working you, you try and squeeze in a run here or an exercise there but when you retire uh, it becomes more of a pri uh, priority and um Getting your annual physical, you know, we know all that's important. Get doing all your di diagnostic testing. Um, so it becomes uh, much more top of mind than when you get to uh, uh, when we're on the back nine, as we say. <laughs> You're on the back nine. I'm going to live about another hundred years. Well, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. probably true. Well, Pat Vitucci, I have to tell you, I've had a wonderful time this morning being with you. And talking about real estate and more, as well as uh, talking about retirement and some thoughts and ideas on how a person can 
move into that retirement mo- mode and enjoy the rest of their their years. And I have to tell you, uh, some spots international seem to have a lot of draw, which I, I didn't quite realize as much as I do now because of the cost of living and, of course, the sense of uh, community with some of those communities abroad. A special thanks for my friend, Pat Vitucci, for being on the show today and providing some insight into retirement here, there, or perhaps everywhere. Last week, my partner Nancy and I were discussing how the practice of real estate used to be a few decades ago as to how it is now where much information is presented on the internet. Sometimes new clients will take information they derive from the internet as advice Taken further, this information may come into conflict with what the real estate professional is telling them. Way back when, when my mother practiced real estate, there was no internet nor instantaneous availability of data at everyone's fingertips. There was people talking with people. Clients would go into the local real estate office and meet their agent, then review listings of homes. Humorously, these home listings arrived at the real estate office by U.S. mail, then placed and kept in a black and white multi-ring binder. There were no office printers at the time. Agents and clients would discuss everything, schools, properties, how things were done, how the contract, which was like a long one-page document, and topics from A to Z. Instantaneous availability of internet data, whether or not the data is accurate, satisfies the anxious reader of today's desire for immediate answers. Today, online data must be carefully vetted for use to rule out issues of obsolescence, incorrect opinions of writers, biased information, or for just being plain wrong. One must note that advice derived from the internet is not likely to have a client's best interest at heart. Experienced agents occasionally find their professional abilities put into question by new clients who believe what they've read is as valuable as the guidance provided by the real estate professional. An experienced agent has significant credentials through the benefit of continuing education, day-to-day current practice, years of experience, and importantly, the incredibly valuable factor of intuition. Sometimes what a client has read can be unhelpful and counterproductive to a client's objective. The internet, subliminally at times, can make folks think they are real estate experts. I recorded Nancy and my discussion from last week, a talk that touches more on the subject of internet media. Let's take a listen. Good morning, I'm Nancy Hatfield and I'm here with my partner Michael Hatfield and this is the Michael Hatfield Real Estate and More Show. Michael, you were recently talking about an aha moment. Yes, yes, yes. I was thinking about how large of a slice of one's financial portfolio that real estate holdings make up, the value of their home and so forth, and realize in housing markets, to a degree, we are long for the ride. You know, something happened the other day when we were showing property that took me back to a time I was with the airline and we had this one airplane that had this carryover item, as we called it, an item that was pesky, but it was deemed not something that would uh, be enough to ground the airplane. Those airplanes are very complex, by the way. So we'd taken this one airplane and went from one destination and to one airport to the next airport and we had mechanics on both sides and they could not solve it and then finally uh, the company had set up this master guru brain mechanic to meet the airplane once we got it to um, New York so we pull into New York and up comes this guy he was kind of not real much in presence and kind of sloppy so to speak and not well dressed and um, but smart as a whip and he was talking about how much money because he did not work for the company that they had called him out to satisfy this problem that they had that we had with this jet so he was there he depowered the system did a couple little things and in 10 minutes he'd solve the problems and he was as he leaving he was saying the amount of money that he had made to solve that problem hmm. you know it's kind of like that in a real estate because it wasn't the amount of time but it was all of that 40 years of experience that that master mechanic had dealing with these airplanes that made him so good and 
quite frankly, worth the money. It wasn't about the hour that it took him to solve the problem and how much money he made for that. It was that it went, it took all of those years to get him to the point where he could solve that problem. And just recently, we um, were out with um, a buyer tour with, with clients, new clients, And uh, we showed them several homes and uh, they had this one that they were very interested in until they started um, becoming the professional and knowing what was wrong with um, this house and what it was going to sell for on the market. So that intuition kind of became secondary to them. Do you you recall what what I'm talking about and what do you think, Nance? Well, sometimes people think that they know more than maybe they do working with a professional. And it's kind of like the airline industry, which we've had a lot of years of watching and experiencing together. And and when you're on an airplane, you are along for the ride. And when it comes to real estate, it is important that people work with somebody they like, they trust, they believe in, um, they believe in their experience, their intuition, and all of those factors go into working with that agent who's representing them to get the property either they want or the property they have to sell. There's quite an environment in the backside. I I totally agree with you. It was interesting uh, to me uh, when we were at a uh, social gathering and I was talking with this this renowned doctor. He was, you know, um, a dermatology uh, surgeon, a really great guy. And I said, you know, since since we've been at this real estate business, it seems like um, I'm the guy that carries out the trash and I'm no more important than that. And why do you think that is? And he responded to me, he said that, you know, uh, to get a real estate license, it doesn't take much. But in order to have the knowledge, the experience of actual the practice, it takes a lot of, of work. It takes a lot of time and effort in order to be any good at what you do. Same thing with surgery. And I said, yeah, but when you, you put on an airline uniform and you have four bars sitting on there, people don't question you the way that they do in real estate. And he laughed and he said, yeah, it's, I can see that uh, I have the advantage to being a surgeon. Right. I remember that conversation quite interesting. The buzz is that home prices are going up. What do you think about that? In the Bay Area, it is, in my view, and only my view, uh, I think it's likely. Uh, Mortgage rates are multi-decade highs. Home prices are up. But yet we have still are getting bidding wars on homes, homes that have um, show a lot of promise to uh, families that that want that type of uh, residence. We're seeing a lot of uh, bidding wars happening, a lot of activity. But yet, as you said, you know, home prices are up now. Mortgage rates are multi-decade highs. I think it's likely going higher. And the one reason that I say that is because of the fact that the housing inventory has been decreasing year over year. Uh, In July, it fell by 6.4% from the prior year. While at the same time, no new home listings, um, which are for homes that are appearing on the market for the first time, fell by 21% from the same period the year before. That's quite a dramatic decrease. Yes, it does indicate uh, what our level of housing inventory is, and it indicates that we could have an increase in um, in home values going forward here in the San Francisco Bay Area. You know, interestingly, Nance, um, in other areas of the country, they don't have appreciation like we do. Um, this is kind of a... Uh, norm here in the San Francisco Bay Area to buy a home for X and then uh, 10 years later be able to realize a significant gain. So yes, uh, with all of the factors that I'm seeing now, barring anything happening that is outside the uh, parameters of the housing market in the Bay Area, I see housing values going higher. There was a uh, something I read recently that said something like four out of 10 homes were sold above the list price as of like the middle of June or something. 
and then in 2018, back to 2018, only one third of homes were sold for over list price. And it's interesting when we work with um, first time home buyers, sometimes they wonder, well, can we, there's a list price, but can we go a lot under that? And often, that's not the case if they really want to be successful at buying a particular home. So that's a hard um, thing to learn about when you're trying to buy a house and you're spending a lot of money, especially in this immediate area in the Bay Area. For sure, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to run a race if you're not going to win it. And uh, just being part of making an offer, I mean, it's an exhausting process to make a really good offer on a house. but. Why, why get in the race if you know for right at the beginning you're not going to win it? Michael, I was reading recently that mortgage application submissions um, saw a decrease of like 3% during the end of July. And why do you think that might be? Well, so many of our buyers today are young folks um, of millennial age, and we use that term, and they're hyper-focused on interest rates, mortgage interest rates, and the affordability of a loan that may be attached to it. So as the interest rates have been successively increasing to their multi-decades high amount that we have right now, but still not really all that high, um, they have less desirability to uh, go out and, and buy a home, so they put it on pause and uh, just don't make a submission for a loan until they have a, a home in their sights that they can't live without. Yeah, understand. You've been listening to Real Estate and More on KGO The Spread. We appreciate you tuning in today and look forward to next week when we can once again take a look at our Bay Area housing markets and the human element that surrounds those housing markets. The views and opinions expressed are based on current economic and market conditions and are subject to change. Information on the show provided for illustrator purposes only and does not constitute professional or legal advice. Information from sources deemed reliable, but accuracy and completeness not guaranteed. Michael Hatfield and the Michael Hatfield Remax team have no liability for information discussed on the show. Consult with qualified professionals prior to taking action. We at the Michael Hatfield Remax team enjoy representing our valued clients. If you or someone you know is interested in buying or selling and wishes to schedule a complimentary appointment with the Michael Hatfield Remax team, call us at 925-322-7775. That's 925-322-7775. Or go to our website, michaelhatfieldhomes.com. I'm Michael Hatfield. Thank you for listening today. Join us next Saturday at 9 a.m. for the next Real Estate and More, when we again sharpen our focus on how's the market. Join us next Saturday morning at 9 and have a wonderful week. Best wishes and blessings to you. DRE 0149